World Day is an annual event sponsored by the American Radio Relay League, which is one of the oldest amateur radio organizations. Um, they sponsor um, the Field Day event, which is hosted the last weekend of every June. They've been doing this since, since 1933. My name is Matt James. Uh, I'm here with my father uh, for field day. I've grown up around ham radios, uh, considering my father's been a part of the community for a very long time. Uh, as a matter of fact, since before I was born. Growing up, I got to watch my father uh, tinker with various types of radios, from shortwave to other various types that I couldn't even tell you. This particular, particular setup here is what is known as a 1B station, and that is one or two individuals. In my case, I've been able to set up with my son this year and, uh, and actually uh, um, be competitive. Uh, we had some equipment failure, but that's part of the game. We have plan B. We're on an alternate antenna system right now, which has been very helpful. Uh, we are not a club activity here. I usually do field day as part of a club, but this year I've elected to set out as a one or two station, one or two person station and see how well we do. And needless to say, it's a lot of work because it takes uh, a lot of equipment. We got tent, we got generators, we got camping equipment. Uh, it's a perfect marriage. If you, if you like camping and you like radio, the combination of the two um, affords uh, just a great field day event. This particular event this year, uh, I've brought some, uh, what I consider some unique technology to play. Uh, one of which is the heart of the system is an ICOM brand name, ICOM transceiver, it's an IC7200. It is a ruggedized transceiver, meaning it has gasketing and sealing. It's not waterproof, it's water resistant and sand and dirt resistant, which is perfect for a field day activity. I also have an 8 foot tall, modified H, vertical dipole antenna mounted on a tripod which for its size is absolutely amazing in its ability to get out, out to distant stations. Uh, our primary antenna system is an inverted V, uh, which is up about 30, 34 feet, and it is specifically, its length is cut to favor the one band that we're operating on, which is considered the 40 meter amateur radio band, uh, which is an allocation given to amateur radio operators from the FCC. Uh, we are strictly operating phone. We don't do CW, which is Morse code. In fact, Morse code is not even a requirement for amateur radio anymore, although many hands still enjoy using it. Uh, I'm uh, John Stura, uh, supervisor uh, from the Prince William County Board of Supervisors for the Gainesville Magisterial District. It was just a very educational experience. I had no idea how comprehensive and involved ham radio operation was and how integral it is, particularly to uh, uh, government in an emergency situation in the event that there's a local disaster or a national disaster and communication is, is limited or eliminated uh, there's always the backdrop or the, the last line of defense, so to speak, of ham radio operation. I would think the, uh, a great way that they can help, first of all, is by being involved and by being active and being interested in being a ham radio operator. Uh, as I mentioned, I found it fascinating just the brief time that I spent here today. Uh, the educational value that, that I'm taking away from, uh, from today is fabulous. But I think. Um, I think the way folks could be of assistance if they're interested in becoming a ham radio operator is get involved, get, get familiar with uh, what the, what's involved in becoming uh, licensed, um, the equipment involved, uh, obviously there is an investment that needs to be made, but um, 
it's a fascinating experience and it's something that is, is, is imperative for local government and state government and national government to be aware of and to be integrated into because in the event uh, uh, of, a, of a natural disaster or a disaster of any type, and they do occur on a, on a, unfortunately on a regular basis, and often we don't anticipate when they're, when they're going to happen, uh, communication is imperative. I guess the most surprising thing I learned was that, um, the, first of all, the number that are involved. I was, I was surprised to learn that there's probably 3,000 operators just in Prince William County. Uh, which really surprised me because I think they stay well below the radar screen and operate uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as a hobby, but are called upon when needed by local government or, or state government or national government. Uh, the other thing that fascinated me was just the technology involved, the, uh, the radio waves that they operate on and the fact that essentially uh, it's a global reach. You can reach out to a, an operator anywhere in the world 24 hours a day.